This video was made possible by Skillshare. More on that later. Hey everyone, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be answering five of the most common what if questions that I can almost guarantee has entered your mind at least once when flying drones in your lifetime. And these include things such as what happens if your joysticks get near the emergency shutoff CSC command while you're flying in midair? What happens if you accidentally hit the takeoff button while your drone is folded up? What happens if you leave the gimbal guard on while the drone is powering up? And a couple of other things like that. In this video, I'll be testing everything on the Mini 2 and Mavic Mini drones. They're pretty similar and most of these things will apply to all DJI drones and a lot of other drones on the market as well but I did just want to mention that up front so with that said let's get right into the video. All right so to begin this should go without saying but I am performing these things so you don't have to so definitely don't try what I'm doing in this video at home. With that said one of the first things I want to try is figuring out what happens when you power on the drone and you leave on the gimbal protector. This is something that you always want to go and remove before powering on your drone because your drone performs a gimbal calibration as it is powering on, if you haven't noticed that before. So every time before you go and perform a flight and power on your drone, make sure to remove this. But in the event that you forget to remove this, let's figure out what happens. So I'm just gonna power it on like you usually would. Got this on right now. As you can see, it is moving up and down kind of stuck going up and down. Let's see if the camera view loads on my app. So no errors or anything like that. As I move the drone around because the gimbal is locked in place due to that gimbal guard, it isn't moving around inside the gimbal protectors. Oh, there we go. Just got a gimbal stuck error. I do have that gimbal error. So without powering it off, let's go and remove the gimbal protector. Oh, instantly it recognized that that was off. So. If you happen to leave on the gimbal protector on your drone, you should be fine. It shouldn't damage the gimbal or anything like that because it does recognize that the gimbal protector is on there. I do find it weird that it was still trying to move a little bit after like the first couple of attempts. Just kind of seems weird that it was trying to calibrate even still after the gimbal protector was known to be on, but whatever. If you happen to go and remove your gimbal protector and the gimbal doesn't automatically calibrate like that just did, all you gotta do is go on your app click the three dots in the top right hand corner, click on control, scroll down until you find gimbal calibration, keep your drone on a flat surface or hold it really still and press auto. Once it is completed, you're all set. Let's figure out what happens if you forget to unfold the legs of your drone and you attempt to take off or you accidentally hit the take off button and your drone tries to take off. Let's see what happens. I have the drone entirely folded up right now. So, all right, let's just go ahead and try it. I'm gonna start the manual way and see if things start up. It did, uh, okay. <laughs> Starting motor failed. Check whether motor is blocked. Interesting. So it went ahead and automatically stopped that. I did not stop that myself. Let's look at the damage really quick and see if that caused any damage to the drone. Hopefully not, but potentially it could have. Let's check the propellers. I don't notice anything really, which is fantastic. I half expected a propeller to go and have a broken piece or something like that, but no, nothing. So Interesting, I did not know that the drone would just automatically shut off like that. So apparently there is a detection built in that if the drone motor is being overloaded or something like that, then it can recognize that. So moving on from that scary experience, now let's get into what if your drone controller dies mid-flight and it shuts off, your drone's far away, what happens? Well, let's figure out. So let's take off legitimately now. See if the drone's all good. Appears so, looks good to me. Flight isn't weird or anything like that. Okay, so for this one, what I've done is I've flown the drone up about 100 feet and away 400 feet to a point where I can see it right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and in order to simulate the controller dying, I'm just gonna go and simply power it off. I'm going to leave the app open. I've got the drone recording. So hopefully we can see what's happening as it's going through. So with that said, let's go ahead and power it off. 
RC not connected. Let's see, I'm not gonna touch the controller. The drone at this point is still just kind of hovering there. Oh, now it's moving. It's moving a lot. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? Okay, it's returning to home. Interesting, it just moved a lot without, I'm gonna just power it off again. I didn't, I didn't initiate that return to home, uh, but now it is returning to home. I can visually see it's returning to home. It's gonna be nearly impossible to see it on this camera because it's so small, but it is up there and I'm still not touching the controller. It is powered off and it's gonna make a full return to home. Let's see if it fully lands. It's just kind of hovering there at this point. Sometimes it doesn't like landing on this surface. So that is quite curious considering it looks like it's just not going to land. If you find yourself in a scenario where your controller dies, don't be over a surface it can't land on. Honestly, I was not expecting this. I thought it would completely return to home. In this case, basically what you gotta do is you just gotta grab it out of the sky and flip it over. Like that. <laughs> so, uh, I, obviously that is not ideal. That's not great for the IMU, but if you have to do it, you've seen it here, so you can do that yourself. So, let's just recoup what happened there. If your controller happens to go and die while in mid-flight, the drone will go and return to home. So this is why you always should go and make sure to set your return to home height before you go and take off. And also just don't fly when you notice that your controller is low on battery. Make sure to fly with at least half or more percentage in controller battery. I've flown it to as low as around one dot, but I wouldn't fly it much lower than that because after that you can't really tell how much battery is left in the controller. So what if, you go and accidentally move your joysticks close to the CSC command, either inwards or outwards in the middle of a flight. Will your drone just fall out of the sky? Will it go and just stop what it's doing? Or what will happen? Especially if you're making a move and you just accidentally get nearby this without intentionally going and moving the joysticks to that position. Real quickly before I get into that though, I've got a quick word from this video's sponsor, Skillshare. If you're someone who hasn't heard of Skillshare before, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey by learning. Whether it be photography, aerial videography, productivity, web development, YouTube success, or an endless number of other topics, Skillshare is the absolute best platform to expand your skills and gain deeper knowledge on the things that you already love learning about. For me personally, I've notably really enjoyed Mark has Brownlee's or MKBHD's recent class, which is titled YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit Video, which no matter if you're a beginner looking into creating YouTube videos or an experienced veteran, it is an absolutely brilliant class that is ought to teach you something that you've never thought of before from one of YouTube's best. There are just so many things that I learned in that class that I am excited to use in my content creation throughout this year and beyond. Skillshare is always launching new premium classes that are entirely ad-free and can be accessed on the Skillshare platform for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Members get unlimited access to Skillshare's entire catalog of content, so consider joining today by clicking the link in the video description below because the first 1,000 of you guys to sign up using that link will get a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. So join using that link below so you can begin learning no later than today. Thanks to Skillshare, as always, for supporting the channel. And on that note, let's get back into the video. All right, so now that we're back from that, let's get into figuring out what happens if you accidentally initiate the CSC command while in the middle of flight. I'm gonna begin recording. If you haven't noticed, I've moved into the grass and that's for some obvious reasons of, uh, I don't wanna totally destroy this drone. One of the main ways that I can anticipate this being a problem is if you are making a move on your drone that requires you to go and have your controller out like that and you're doing something like that as well. It's doesn't totally make the most sense because it kind of looks weird. So, I mean, I hope you're not doing something like that, but if you are, so let's first go and test by moving the stick inwards like that and doing that. No, <laughs> it performs a weird, really, really weird landing maneuver, but that did not result in a crash, which is great. 
Let's try the other way. Let's go outwards, like so. No, once again, a really weird landing maneuver, <laughs> but not a crash, which is really great. And just to prove to you that I do have that on right now, let's go into controls, or settings, sorry, safety, scroll down, advanced safety functions. Here we go, emergency propeller stop, emergency only. Let's see if you turn it on to any time. This one will probably result in a crash. Okay, so I will say by default, it does leave on the emergency only. I don't really know what it uh, suspects as an emergency only, how it detects that, but um, in the event, let's just try again. Let's say you're just making some weird moves. Oh, there we go. That time it did fall out of the sky. Let's see how it's doing. It wasn't really a hard hit, so that's good. Gimbal's still good. Propeller's still good, okay? So, if you happen to have any time enabled and you happen to just be going by and making a weird, really quite weird maneuver with your drone, or if you have your sticks programmed in a different way that maybe that's not so weird to be moving your sticks in that way, um, definitely make sure you do not do that if you have any time enabled because as you just saw, the drone just fell from the sky and crashed technically. I mean, that wasn't really a hard crash, but if you were hundreds of feet in the sky, the drone doesn't care. If it's enabled with any time, then you are pretty much set for a crash. So don't do that while in the air. Emergency propeller stop, it's set to emergency only. So what I'm going to do now is Let's act like it is an emergency. And in an emergency, you probably are just instantly going into the middle or the outside. So that's, I'm going to assume that's probably how DJI determines that it's an emergency. I'm just gonna get it close to the ground just so it doesn't fall too far once it probably turns off. So pay attention to the drone, it is right there. In this case, you would be potentially in an emergency that requires you to just move into the center really quickly. So let's do that. No. Once again, a weird landing, even with an intentional CSC shutoff. That is so weird. How does DJI calculate that it's an emergency only? How do they know that it's not an emergency in your eyes and <laughs> prevents you from emergency shutting off the motors? Interesting. Okay, so if you have emergency only enabled on your drone in your settings, then just know that the emergency shutoff should not go and allow you to power off the propellers at any time in the flight. However, if you have any time enabled, like it says, you can go ahead and emergency shut off your propellers at any point in time in the flight. So definitely use that with caution. Only use it if it really is an emergency and you have to shut off your propellers. But it's kind of weird that the emergency only basically disables that altogether. Let's move into what happens if your DJI app crashes in the middle of the flight. We've covered what happens if your remote controller dies in the middle of the flight, but what happens if the DJI app just goes away and isn't connected to your controller anymore? Let's see. So in order to go and show this one, I'm just gonna go and simply quit the app, which should function as a means of uh, the app crashing. And as you can see, it's on my home screen now, not doing anything at all. Drone is still fully functional and nothing really happened, which is expected, um, at least in my case, because if you think about it, what happens when you go and quit the app, it's not like you're going and disconnecting the controller. You're really just connecting your ability to live view the app. With the app quit, let me just show you really quick. If you have the app quit, you can still go ahead and start and stop recording. So if I press this button up here, you'll hear it makes a noise. If I open up the DJI app right there, as you can see, it went ahead and stopped the recording for me. So even that still functions if you don't have a phone or tablet to view the live feed on. You can do the same thing with photos. If the app is quit, you can go ahead, press the shutter button, and it will take photos. It's taking weird photos of me right now as you can see. <laughs> so there you go, that is what happens if your DJI app happens to crash in the middle of the flight or if somebody calls you in the middle of the flight. Basically all the scenarios that you can think of that would prevent the app from communicating with your controller 
that is what happens. So there you have it. That is pretty much it as far as all the what ifs that I've come up with right now that I could test on the Mavic Mini. If you have any other what ifs that you would like me to perform and test out in future videos, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. I would love to hear what you wanna see and also I'd love to check them out. And of course, if you do want to see those future videos from me, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below as well as ringing the notification bell if you want to be notified of when I upload. Also hit the thumbs up button if you found this video enjoyable. It was definitely a little bit anxiety filling for me, so make sure to hit the thumbs up button for that. Also, if you wanna check out some of my other videos, those can be found right over there. But with that said, that is pretty much it for this one. Hope you liked it and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.